Welcome back to AB 474 Indoor Environmental Control. This is the final subsection of our psychrometric processes section and this one will cover adiabatic mixing and evaporative cooling. The next one we're going to look at is adiabatic mixing. So in this case we're going to bring two air streams together and if you recall adiabatic means we're not going to put any energy in so this is a zero energy process. And the result is a proportional result based on the mass of the two air streams. And we're going to reach our result by using interpolation. So on the psychometric chart, again we're going to do our little simple sketch here, and we have two points. We're essentially going to draw a line between those two points and um, look at the proportion of the mass of the two airstreams, let's just say they're equal, so we end up halfway in the middle uh, as our final state point. Um, and if we want to take a look at it, we um, have essentially two air streams coming together. Each of those air streams having some properties associated with them. So we have a mass coming in an enthalpy associated and a humidity ratio seem to be our standards that we're going to choose and then we have an amount of mass leaving and due to conservation of mass the mass leaving is the sum of the two that are coming in and a final state point for the mixed air And if we want to kind of look at our governing equations for this, um, again, because it's based on the proportion of the mass, um, they look a little bit like this. First, we have conservation of mass. and then we have conservation of energy. So the amount of moisture in the air uh, coming in to both airstreams is the same as the amount of moisture leaving through the, the mixture. And the amount of energy coming in through each of the airstreams is the same as the amount leaving in the mixture. So conservation of energy, conservation of mass, and then we can combine these in order to um, have our proportional equations that help us get to our to solve for uh, whatever our unknown is. Go. Now let's work through an example of this. <clears throat> so we're given two airstreams. One of them is 15,000 CFM. 
the other is 5,000 <clears throat> CFM. One is at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. The other is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then just to trip us up, we have a wet bulb temperature instead of a relative humidity, but that's okay. We know how to deal with that because all we need is two state uh, two, two properties to get all the other properties of a state point. <clears throat> and we are required or, or asked to find state point three. just apply our uh, relationship equations that we just looked at. Um, so from our state, um, from the properties we're given, we need the uh, a few additional state points, a few additional properties for each of our state points. We need our humidity ratio. And our specific volume. You can pull these off the psychometric chart or use the calculator, as we've been saying. Right, then let's solve for um, our masses of air. So one of the most common mistakes I see students make whenever they're working with these uh, relationships is they <coughs> use the volumetric um, flow rate of air as opposed to the mass of air that's moving at each of the, the state points. So be sure that you convert your volumetric flow rates to masses before you apply the equations. If you do that, you'll get that the mass of Airstream 1 is 1,096 pounds per minute. And mass of Airstream 2 195. Okay, and from here on out, it's just a matter of manipulating our equations just a little bit and plugging in the correct number in the correct place. do always recommend at the end of this that you take a look at it on a chart and make sure that your answer makes sense. You can also just look at the numbers uh, and get a sense for whether or not it makes sense. One thing you'll note is that I haven't looked at it on a chart yet uh, because I want to show you that you don't need, uh, so I showed you on the chart and said, okay, it's proportional, you draw it, if it's 50-50, you put a line in the middle. You can do it that way. You can always just go straight to the chart and kind of estimate, is it a quarter, or thir two thirds, one third, how do you want to do that? Um, or you can use the equations. And really, whichever of those is best depends on what information you're giving you're given and how precise you need the result to be. Because sometimes you might not even be given an exact flow rate, but you can still solve the problem. Okay, now we have a humidity ratio and an enthalpy. So we have two state point or two properties of our of our third state point so we can get the rest of that state point if we want to and let's take a look <coughs> So 
So here we go for adiabatic mixing. We have um, a state point one and a state point two. And if we mix those two together, we end up with something that falls about here. Uh, if you recall, we were at 5,000 and 15,000. So this is about, I would say, 5,000 worth, and this is about 15,000 worth. And so um, that's where we end up with, with our um, uh, in our final state point. And then what you want to look at is kind of to make sure, does this make sense? So look at your calculated values. Um, show up that our uh, humidity ratio should be around 0 0.0076. It should fall somewhere around here. Pretty close. And our um, enthalpy, 24.6. Here's 25. Follow it down. There we go. Yeah, so we're, we're really close. Uh, so I think our state point is, even if we estimate, is, is really close to the, to the right place. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, and then the last thing that I have in my notes for this is kind of a another permutation of the uh, governing equations that we can kind of follow through before we move on from adiabatic mixing. This is it. So you could certainly derive this on your own and end up at the same conclusion, but sometimes it's worthwhile just to kind of work through and take a look at manipulating these equations just to get you more comfortable changing them around on your own. This is another, like I said, a, another permutation of the, the same set of governing equations that we um, derived at the first. And essentially it's flipping what we found before, which was I2 minus I3 over I3 minus I1. Uh, but it does work when you flip it. So. Okay, we have one more process to discuss to wrap up this section. And we're going to discuss it relatively briefly because um, it's a relatively simple concept. Um, but a very powerful process. It's evaporative cooling. This is also um, another form of humidification. It is an adiabatic process, meaning that we also don't provide any energy um, to initiate the state change, to cause the state change. Um, in this case, we'll stay on a line of constant enthalpy. And while our wet bulb temperature and our enthalpy lines are not identical to one another. Um, they're pretty close and for all intents and purposes when we do evaporative cooling we're staying along a line of constant wet bulb temperature and a line of constant enthalpy. If you have to pick between the two, it's constant enthalpy. Change in empathy. 
<clears throat> and we're not going to say too much about it as we're just introducing it here. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Well, we'll talk a lot more about it whenever we're doing some of our example problems. Um, the opposite of this process is um, what we call desiccant drying. Or desiccant dehumidification. And there are a number of um, substances that absorb water uh, from the air. And um, we call those desiccants. If we wanted to represent what a Desiccant drying might look like it might look like a, a piece of material placed in line that absorbs water. So one of the more common things that we see in uh, commercial HVAC is something called a desiccant wheel. Um, it's also called an energy wheel, and um, we'll discuss in further detail what what that actually means um, in some of our examples. If I don't, bring it up. Um, another example, and this is an example of evaporative cooling, but of this process, but on the humidification side is what we call a swamp cooler. Without spending much of our video time on it, I uh, challenge you to go look up what a swamp cooler is uh, and then bring your questions about what it is and how it works and why it's important. Uh, but essentially it's a very energy efficient way of cooling as long as you have uh, an environment that's conducive to using evaporative cooling. <coughs> All right, and on our psychrometric chart, we start with some state point and we move along the line of constant enthalpy. <coughs> along that process, we are um, as you can see, adding moisture to the air, so we're moving up in humidity ratio, but we are cooling, so we're moving down in temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that is the last thing that we're going to cover in this section. Um, we will work through a number of example problems, uh, applying these processes, and um, talk a little bit more about the, the uh, implications of energy use uh, using the different processes and um, that will conclude psychrometrics so thank you very much and I look forward to the next chapter with you <laughs>